activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Is, is, uh, goes back outside to the Jews when he finds that, that, uh, that uh, uh, Jesus has been sent back to him. And he says, look, I don't see, I, I don't find any fault with this guy. And then in verse 39, but he says, look, I know that you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And he's needling them. You know, he's, he's not calling him by name. He's saying, this is your king. You want me to release the king of the Jews to you? And they cried out, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, the interesting thing about this is that they all knew who Barabbas was. They all knew about Barabbas. Uh, Barabbas was a robber, the Bible says. We'll find out what that word really means here in just a moment. But uh, so they knew who Barabbas was. So Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, or actually had him flogged. Uh, And the soldiers, verse 2 in chapter 19 now, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to, to them, to the Jews, See, I'm bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to him, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. Now, normally, the governor lived in Caesarea, and during these great feasts, uh, they would come into Jerusalem, or uh, the, the governors from around would would come in to, uh, for the Passover in case there was some sort of insurrection. And it was a particularly dangerous time and a dangerous place because emotions ran high. Remember that the Passover was all about the Jews remembering when they were delivered from bondage, when they were delivered from, from Egypt. And so that's the whole premise of the Passover was to remember when they were free. And here they were basically in bondage again because Rome was lording it over them. And so the Passover was a very, very dangerous emotional time because the Jews were there to remember freedom and at the same time realizing that they were under the bondage of Rome. So I I want us to take a look at where they were so you can kind of get a a, a figure of a concept of it all. The uh, Pilate was probably... um, in this palace of the Roman governor. Uh, there's some question as to where it was, but I want to show you something. Uh, it, was, it was probably the, what's called the Antonia Fortress. This is the Antonia Fortress right here. Uh, this is the temple right here. And so it was, this, is, this is north. So this is the northwest corner of the, the temple. And so... More than likely, that's where, see those four towers there? This was actually a barracks, but it was, it was also quite nice, you know, for the, obviously for the governors to, and the pilots to stay there, that sort of thing. So that's probably where, where Pilate was. Now, uh, let's go to the map, and I want you to see how this all plays out. This is the, the, uh, the temple area. Don't go bad on me now. Uh, the temple area, that's the uh, tower of Antonio, or the, uh, the fortress, Antonio Fortress. This is right here, uh, this was the uh, site of the Lord's Supper. This is the upper room right here. Right next to it, just north of it, is the house of Caiaphas. Remember where they took Jesus after they arrested him? Well, this is where they arrested him. Now that seems like it's a horrible, you know, long walk, but it's not. It's, you know, it, 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 it was the sort of thing that people walked all the time. So they brought him back to the house of Caiaphas. Caiaphas sends him to to Herod. Well, Herod, more than likely, if he wasn't at the Tower of Antonia, or the uh, the fortress, he more than likely was here at the palace of Herod, which had uh, some incredibly lavish uh, residents, a couple of residents there. And so this is probably where Herod was. Herod sends him back, I think, to the Tower of Antonia, the fortress there, since this was actually owned by the Romans. So, so... Uh, Jesus has been here, now he goes back. Now to get a perspective of all of this as we continue to study, this is Golgotha, this is where the crucifixion took place. This is the Garden of Gethsemane. So when, uh, later on when we study that they take Jesus and decide to arrest him, he's probably, or uh, to crucify him, 
He's probably right in this area here. So they would drag him out. This, is the, this area here is called the Via Dolorosa, right through here. And that's where he goes out to, and that's where he's crucified. So that gives you kind of a, a perspective of the city and everything, you know, the, where they were going back and forth and doing all the things that they, they had to do. Uh, that evening, right before they decided to crucify Jesus. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.